Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning about the Expand World Prefabs mod. This is a server-side mod that you can use to change how certain things work in the game. I'm going to show you alterations to the Ooze Bomb, the Bile Bomb, and the smoke bomb. I'll also show you how to set it up yourself, okay? And just as a reminder, everything done with this mod is completely server-side. Your players don't even have to know that this is happening. But before I get into the details, let's show you some illustrations of the changes. Starting with the ooze bomb, which is available once you reach the swamp, made it a workbench. Normally, you can toss an ooze bomb and it's going to poison the enemies that it hits. However, Ooze bombs have been modified. You see how it broke the rock? Ooze bombs on this server can be used to clear rocks, allowing for easier passage while sailing. Our next example is the Bile Bomb, which is made in the Mistlands and is significantly stronger. This one doesn't just damage items. It actually mines the ground downward, so you can keep throwing them in order to lower the terrain, but you do have to be careful, because they can kill you as well. Well, I managed to completely lose track of that little staging area I'd made, so we'll have to move on to the smoke bomb demonstration. Traditionally, smoke bombs are used in the Ashlands, and you're able to put out fires. But aside from that, Smoke bombs in normal Valheim don't actually do anything in combat. But what if the smoke bombs caused your enemies and you to choke, leaving you staggered and vulnerable to more damage? Well, here that's exactly what they do. Now we can use the smoke bombs to actually stagger enemies. It's as if they're choking on the smoke. And this allows us to run away from enemies if we're suddenly in danger. But we also have to be careful because if we use it close to ourselves, then we get staggered and are vulnerable to a high damage attack as well. In order to update your server to have the modifications shown so far in the video, you'll need to put the expand world mod on the server and then run the server, which will generate all of these files. You can locate the files by going into your bepinx and then your config folder. Within that, there'll be this expand world folder. In there are a bunch of YAML files. YAML files are really awesome because they get updated live. It's changed on your server without having to restart the server, making them fantastic for troubleshooting and learning. You don't have to worry about most of these files. Everything we're gonna work with only has to do with expand data and expand prefabs. Here we have expand data opened on the left, and expand prefabs opened on the right. This file has a lot of other stuff going on. For example, let's say you want to get rid of water damaging structures when it rains. It's actually quite simple. Comment below if you want me to show you how it works. But for now, we're going to focus on what was actually shown previously. Let's start with the ooze bomb. The ooze bomb has been modified so that it clears rocks, allowing people to sail through rivers more easily. Doing this requires this area here in expand data. So you can just copy this as you see it and just paste it to the bottom of your expand data text file. And then that's all you need to do. Then for the expand prefabs, we'll look for the ooze bomb section of the expand prefabs file. It's actually quite short. That's why I started with this one. It's easy to understand. What happens is we're taking the ooze bomb explosion and then reacting to it with a troll ground pound attack. And that troll ground pound is why you can use this to clear debris much faster than you would normally be able to. It still retains the original poisoning effect of the bomb. And all that you technically need is this ooze bomb AOE section here in expand prefabs, and then this ooze bomb AOE section in your expand data. Let's say that you want to modify it so that it doesn't damage players, then you could change this value here, hit characters to zero. 
And then that will make it so it damages players, but I find that to be not as fun. I like it more when the player has to be careful so that they don't get themselves killed. Additionally, it's important that you understand this string of numbers here. The three zeros followed by the three zeros. That's something that is a recurring theme with Expand World Prefabs. I won't get into all of the details, because the most important ones that you need to understand are right here. These are the coordinates that you want the thing to happen relative to what it's reacting to. So let's say that you want the thing to happen like a meter above the trigger. Then what you would do is make this last zero a one. This is the Y coordinate. But in the case of the troll ground pound attack, it can be exactly where the trigger is. That's totally fine. The reason I want to show you that specific variable, that third zero, is because it's very important for these bio bombs. Watch closely what happens when I throw the exploding bio bomb into the terrain. It makes a big explosion we can see that it actually dug into the terrain itself. This is done by using the lava blob explosion from the Ashlands. So let's look at the part of the text file that handles the lava blob explosion. I call it the Biobomb Terrain Deepener. And we can see on the left under Expand Data, we have to have this. And then on the right, under Expand Prefabs, we have to have this. As long as you have these two things, it should work. What's going on is we're looking for the explosion of the bio bomb. And then when the server sees that, it creates a blob, a lava blob explosion, but it puts it down into the ground a little bit. This really amplifies the destructive capability of the bombs, and it enables you to dig in a whole new different way. You still have to listen to the terrain rules. This isn't going to go any lower than you could pickaxe, but it's a whole new way to mine and use bombs, and it makes them much more fun. Honestly, maybe a little bit too fun, but I guess we'll see how it goes. Now let's look at the code for the smoke bomb. This one is a little bit more complicated, because it doesn't just tie in something else, it actually uses something called an RPC call. Unlike the previous bombs, the smoke bomb adaption is only done with the expand prefab section, and it's shown here. This actually has multiple modifications. You can edit these variables here to increase the strength of the fire putting outness, And then below that, we have the staggering effect. And what's going on here is that it's staggering every couple of seconds. Something interesting is you can throw the bomb, and then it smokes, and then you can run through it, and you're not going to get choked out. The choke effect only happens in that initial burst. And that's it for this video, everybody. If you want to support my work or get started on this on your own server, then consider renting a Valheim server at Zap Hosting using my link, JP Valheim. Having your own Valheim server is a fantastic way to play Valheim, and you can also get your feet wet in some game development. So if you're interested in any of this yourself, then the whole world is your oyster with a dedicated server, especially if you know how to use this mod, Expand World Prefabs. Either way, if you'd like to see more Valheim content, then like this video or any other video about Valheim, and then YouTube will start dishing out the content. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!